Hey there guys, what a night, what a thriller, what has this eruption done this time? Really, really surprising. Um, the guys that work on the defense walls, they did a great job. So it is dying down, so it doesn't look like the lava will reach the sea, which is a good thing, but of course you can never say never. And uh, you know, this morning, this is what I have to deal with a lot of horse poop and uh once i'm done with that guys i'll go inside and i'll let you know about the latest what is happening in iceland but you know things need to be done first and uh, i'll see you later hi there so what is the latest so it seems some icelandic lava is going to be sent to germany for analysis isn't that interesting so um, the scientists of the earth sciences institute of the university of iceland have taken samples today from the edge of the lava flow and that will be sent to germany and then they will be analyzed and they're saying that this will help them to predict future flow models so they are expecting that the results from this analysis will come back in a few weeks and uh, so this is interesting you would think that they have the capability to analyze this uh, in their own country since so they're having eruptions all the time but uh, it, it seems not so why Germany um, we don't have that many volcanic uh, volcanic sounds weird volcanic um, um, eruptions or stuff going on but you know I don't think it's it's just the Institute probably that is in Germany that can make a chemical a partial analysis of all the parts that are in there and that's basically what they want to do they want to know exactly um does that lava have a similar composition than the lava that was coming out of the other eruptions and i think that is something that they're interested in but it, it looks like it is the same and we will know more when these results come out they are saying they're really looking at the chemical composition down to the smallest trace elements to see where it's coming from and uh and yeah i just wanted to let you know that is interesting but then there's more let's look at what the met office has released so the Met Office is also confirming the activity of the volcano has decreased and it has really decreased significantly. But still, if you're down there at these defense walls, um, the lava flow is immensely high, so higher than a person. That's why they were building these defense walls, I think up to eight meters in height, because that lava is just massive. And you know, they said yesterday, don't be deterred because it's looking so black. It looks like, oh, that's finished. But if you're standing right in front of it, um, it's basically, it, it has a black crust and underneath in it, it's still reddish, yellowish, and it's still crumbling and moving forward, pushing the rocks. Right now it's at a rate about 20 meters per hour, I believe. That's where it's moving towards the sea. So it doesn't look like it will be able to reach the sea because, you know, at that speed, I think it's going to slow down even further. But should it reach the sea, it, it can be really, really dangerous because it forms chlorine gas if the acidic lava gets into the salty seawater and then depending on how the wind goes chlorine gas it's dangerous that's why today there were some reporters accompanied by the police and they all had gas masks with them because you never know right you have to be prepared volcanic gases by themselves can be harmful depending where the wind blows but when all the reporters were there the wind was coming from the sea blowing it away from them so that is interesting. So the Met Office say there is still activity at three locations on the eruptions on that fissure, um, but uh, little seismic activity has been recorded in this area so far of today. And uh, 
the the lava that was being spit out in these spots along the fissure was high until midnight but then the activity has slowly decreased as the night was continuing and there was some steady activity throughout the day but also this seems to have slowed down a bit during the afternoon and now there's nighttime in Iceland so they have also shown a new map and guys, since we're in the middle of the video, it would be great if you could give this video a thumbs up. I mean, not a manure fork up, but give it a like and watch it till the end to push the algorithm a little bit, guys. So thanks for that and back to the video. And that map here that you see, it shows the impact area of the lava flow that would reach the sea if it would reach the sea that would be the impact area that would be negatively impact and that scenario and the response plans related to it have been discussed at the status meetings of the met office and the civil defense yesterday and today so chlorine gas and gases right that's the highest danger that comes from that there can be small explosions if it hits the water as well but where the estimate where it would hit the water there is a small settlement but there's not a major development with lots of people living there or something like this right now they were worried that the lava might cross the road there um, but it hasn't yet so it's still less than 250 meters away from the road you see the road there in that little red circle it's Sudur Stranda Vego Right now, they're saying that in the afternoon, it was even as little as 12 meters per hour with that's the speed that the lava is moving forward. So it is considerably less speed than what was measured earlier today. I said 20 meters, so now it's down even to 12 meters. So if that speed remains unchanged, the lava would reach the road in about 20 hours and then it would have to travel another 350 meters to reach the sea. But as it is slowing down, it's probably not going to happen. They are saying though, if lava would reach the sea, it could cause a local hazard due to the rapid cooling of the lava. So at first there would be a danger from pyroclastasy and gas formation and primarily hydrochloric acid in a radius of about 500 meters from the point where lava would come into contact with the sea and that's why they're having the red circle there and the red dot is where it would merge with the sea so in a radius of about 500 meters from that point and as it goes further away from that point where they would meet the risk decreases and is maybe not existent anymore if you're further away than three kilometers and that's the other larger red line that's a radius of three kilometers so if there were people in Grindavik it would basically still affect half of Grindavik but basically right all of Grindavik so better safe than sorry so but it is they're also saying you know since they have had a closer look at, at the activity of everything that was happening today they are considering it unlikely that the lava will reach the sea and uh, it would take about two days and that's probably not going to happen unless the eruption restarts again but it hasn't done that in the past so but you know they are also stressing so while the eruption still continues it is important to be prepared for this scenario because you never know and the conditions could be life-threatening to those that are within these affected areas and we shouldn't forget that these heroes there these workers with their excavators that are constantly working on the defense walls and moving them and putting up new ones and making them higher they're in the area too and they could be affected by this then they have released another picture and i think uh, it gives a also a good impression you see the dark area that's the lava flow the current lava flow and then you see the road there and then you, you it gives you a little bit of a perspective where everything is and how far it has to go i always find if you see the pictures then you're really like wow 
it looks closer than it looks if you're just looking on a map, right? So this picture, it was taken at Husafell, that's east of Brindavik, and it was taken today. This is the status quo of 1 p.m. today. This is where how far the lava had traveled at 1 p.m. today, March 17th. Well, it's March 18th right now in Iceland. Um, so it was flowing along the defense wall. So the defense walls have really worked very well. It was flowing along. And it was good that they made them higher because I'm not sure if like a four meter high would, would have really helped. So it looks like everything's higher now, but it's hard to tell from a picture. But you know, it is, it is very, very interesting. And uh, on that picture, you see that from that status quo, the distance to the sea was about 350 meters. The next picture that they have released is this is how the eruption was looking at 11 a.m. on March 17th in Iceland. So since then, it has gradually started to slow down even further. So it's nighttime in Iceland now. So probably tomorrow, if everything goes as usual, it'll probably be way less. And then there's a video that has surfaced from the evacuation of the Blue Lagoon. It's just a few second video where basically people are running outside with scared faces. The sirens are going and you see the red sky behind them. Um, I'll put the link uh, in the description, guys. Um, so that is really scary and the tourists seem to be really, really scared. And I have to raise the question again, is this really something if you're a decent business that you have to do to your guests repeatedly? I mean, can't you just close down a little earlier when you know something's in the works? I mean, if you see these faces, gosh, does that really have to be? But on the other hand, I'm wondering, the, the people that are going there, do you really have to go there? Can't you sit in your warm bathtub or go to some of the other beautiful lagoons and hot springs that are there on Iceland? I mean, what's the thrill about it? I really don't understand it. And, and there is an article um, on the Icelandic newspaper MBL um, and it's it's kind of like, what can I say? Some people are saying it was really exciting and some say tourists were were upset and visibly upset and scarce and um, so some say I thought it was exciting because compared to how the eruptions have been it wasn't that good but you know the sirens scared me a little bit um, it was like in a movie um, but you know it was it's not a movie it's reality right the newspaper says it's an unforgettable experience well that it is for sure and then the newspaper writes further uh, judging by the video it seems that a lot of desperation has taken hold people started running when they got out and saw the eruption but the the workers also urged visitors to hurry and prevent the exits from getting blocked um, and so they were saying in the end this was an experience that will not be forgotten and uh, yeah for sure not I, I in my opinion guys and you know that I, I think they're taking their chances I don't think that really has to be especially not um, if tourists are just running out there getting into cars or wherever and adrenaline is high they're upset and then you just leave them and let them drive away um, I don't I don't think this is this is good um, I, I don't I feel very un, un, uneasy about that, but you know, what does it help? This, this will keep going and going and happening as long as these eruptions are taking place. I'm pretty sure the place will open up very, very soon and then uh, they will wait it out again until the last minutes. I mean, this is the, how many evacuations did we have now? I think uh, as many as we had uh, events, like I think uh, November, December, January, February, then March, like, I think this is the sixth evacuation, correct me if I'm wrong. And so, <laughs> The tourists keep flocking, so maybe this is some kind of adventure. I don't know, guys. Um, so that is my update about the Blue Lagoon.
So then a smaller update, um, they were worried earlier that, you know, if the lava flows uh, over the fiber optic cables, that communications in Grindavik could come down or telecommunications. But the technical department has said that the cable is buried 90 centimeters into the ground. And they're thinking that if lava flows over it, it would take some time for the cable to be damaged by the heat. And if it were to be damaged, there would be other cables that would carry the radio communications to and from Grindavik. So that is good. That doesn't seem to be at risk, but there's nobody in Grindavik anyways. So yeah, so basically that's my update. Um, there's other stuff too. I just don't want to make this video all too long. So I'm done with shoveling horse poop and uh, this video is also done for today, but I'm very sure I will release another update uh, very, very soon. So guys, if you're new here, check out my Iceland playlist. There's lots of background information, what has happened over the past few months. And also I released about four videos yesterday so that you can follow up with what has happened with that eruption. But of course, other topics as well, the Titan submersible story, there has been news just two weeks ago Go. and of course other volcanoes and other incidents right now what I find fascinating is the Boeing story a whistleblower was making public that there were so many defects in the manufacturing process a guy who had worked in the quality control for 30 years and then he was found unalive in his car the morning before he was to give another testimony is that a coincidence it looks quite fishy because a friend of his has also made a statement that he predicted this and he said that in case this is happening please know for sure it wasn't me so watch the video i'll put it in the end screen guys and i'll see you very soon bye bye i can't wave with my hand because i'm still holding that that i'll turn it around <laughs> my most important working tool so see you soon guys